Okay, there aren't requests to change anything in the agenda, so we will start from the first item on it. And uh, let me go in edit mode. Okay. Uh, we do have three action items on with, that we're tracking. Um, the first one um, we we did change the mm, the ownership off last time we met, and right now it's uh, an action item on the solution authors, and um, this is about evaluating computing proposals uh, for the solution of M and A. And we talked in the past about metrics, and then we. Uh, we talked about some collaboration that's ongoing, but it wasn't disclosed. Um, in the poll results that uh, we talked about last week, we said <clears throat> we expect the collaboration to be uh, reported back uh, to the group, and uh, and the chairs are really um, and, you know they're pushing, they're putting incentives on the authors to. Uh, to give us where they are right now so that we can um, understand the next steps. So this this action item is on the solution authors. And if any is on the call today, please uh, come forward and update us. Wow. Okay, not many hands are raised. Uh, must be something I'm saying that scaring people off. Okay, Lois, Lois, go ahead. Lois. Uh, I I just wonder. We had that silence a couple of times. But should we actually name the documents uh, we want to have reports on? Uh, and then we will see if there are documents that, uh, well, there's a push to report if you mention, and there's also a push to get your um, document registered if you're not uh, listed in, in with your document. That's a good uh, suggestion, though. I agree. There is a uh, there is work that Stewart has done on this wiki. So I did flip to it. Uh, in section four, he has candidate solutions. And I think he listed all of them. And uh, basically, it's all of those. I, I, okay, haven't, yeah. I haven't updated this in a while. So if there's anything else um, that snuck uh, in and, and I haven't noticed, then um, uh, I'm sure that the authors will let, let me know. Or oh, they could update it themselves. Yeah. But uh, I can actually compile, make a mail out of this and send it out. Uh, so we are pushing the authors a bit. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. The next action item is uh, on the agenda today. So I will just say that it's on the agenda. Um, it was on the agenda last week as well. Oh, 22. Okay. And the third action item is uh, a, uh, it has long history, but 
I had an action item to send out an email to the authors, and I did, in fact. And I don't know if Kuriti is on the call today. Uh, he is not. Uh, so I did reach out to Kuriti. Uh, I haven't heard back from him on this, but I can update if anyone else has a further update. Let me check if anyone has raised their hands. Uh, you still have your hand raised. Okay. I don't see it. So. Okay, that's it for today on the action items. Um, I don't think we have anything else to track. Okay, I'll save this state and we'll go back to the agenda. <clears throat> okay, Loa, please go ahead, take, uh, take the mic and and talk to us about that. okay Th this is not really a discussion it's just a when i sent out the um, call on the mpls forward characteristics i forgot to put a end date there and uh, adian reminded me and then we discussed it uh, in the with the uh, uh, with the co-chairs and said that uh, we will close it uh, 19th of October, that is actually four weeks after we sent it out. Uh, and I just wanted to put it up here uh, for two reasons. One is that I will want to have it documented that we actually have a, a termination date. And also if people have opinions on the length of, of the call. Thank you. Uh, there aren't any uh, one who's interrupting to ask questions on this or elaborate. Oh, maybe Greg. Uh, yeah, Greg, go ahead. So, well, um, just to follow up, um, their deadline is uh, uh, four weeks from when it was announced. Uh, what the plan um, for um, releasing this uh, results? Would it be um, ITF 115 meeting? I would, I would send that question to, to Stuart, but he will see we're doing most of the job. I have an opinion, but I can wait. Sorry, what was the question again? When do you uh, think the um, polling characteristics poll will happen? Yes, when, when the uh, working group chairs, the chairs or the design team uh, uh, were thinking and planning to have this poll released. Uh, I don't um, think it's for discussion, it's just for probably information and keep in mind when evaluating solutions. So the chairs were going to send the poll out. I'm not quite sure whether it's been sent out yet or not. It has. All right. Okay. So it's gone out. Um, so it'll be four weeks plus the length of time it takes Adrian to analyze the the results. I, I can um, see how it can be anything other than uh, it, 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 it. How can it be anything other than that? So I imagine five weeks would be the minimum uh, from the start date that uh, we would see the answers. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, as, 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 how many weeks is it to ATF? Um, how, how it's well, it's four. I, I feel it's like four weeks six. after one, two, three. more than a month. Right. Okay. Uh, so, so I mean, it'd be nice if we got the answer for to discuss at the IETF week. Um, I guess we need to. Um, 
uh, see if our helper can do it by then. I think uh, very reasonable. Thank you. Okay. So we'll make it an agenda item at that uh, joint meeting. Sure, we will have it on IETF 115 agenda. Okay, nothing else on this. Uh, we will move on. And the next item is uh, IOEM DEX. So, Greg, please okay, go ahead. I'll start sharing. Okay, so I hope that you see my screen. Okay, so I am we do. yes, I am direct expert in MPLS network using MNA. So um, um I am was uh, has found the um home working group in IPPM working group, so which is not in the routing area. So that might be that's why some people have not been following uh, their discussions and uh, um, the documents that uh, IPPM Working Group um, uh, publishes. Uh, as you see by the numbers, so RFC 9197 published as IAM data types, uh, which not only includes their uh, specification of uh, informational elements that uh, can be uh, collected uh, using IAM that includes, um, uh, for example, um, ingress, egress uh, interface identifiers, uh, timestamps, and some uh, additional information. So that reflects operational state and telemetry uh, data, uh, but also uh, the method to collect and transport information. And, um, as this is an um, uh, on-path uh, method, so it uses um, user packets uh, uh, encapsulating in IOM. And um, RFC 9197 does not specify any particular uh, data plane encapsulation, but only outlines uh, their um, general uh, format for IOM part so that um, four IEM uh, options have been defined, uh, pre-allocated, incremental, um, edge to edge, and proof of transit. So um, these are all um, options uh, to collect information in a packet, in a data packet. Uh, the uh, difference between the pre-allocated and incremental is that um, in incremental, their encapsulating IEM node allocates uh, all the space that is expected to be used uh, for um, data collected on the transit node that support IEM. And pre-allocated, it basically um, delegates this um, allocation of space, and which is resulting in uh, each transit node changing the length of the packet to the transit node. Uh, so edge to edge uh, is uh, as uh, from their its name, uh, where the only ingress and egress IEM nodes collect information. A proof of transit, it's a, a mode somewhat similar to uh, pre-allocated, but it was specifically designed for NSH uh, as to um, really verify that uh, expected uh, sequence of nodes have been traversed in their uh, expected order. So it's not only that uh, the packet traversed um, this sequence of nodes, but it traversed in a specific order. 
So uh, their um, operational state and telemetry information. Yes, Tarek, you have a question? Yeah, yes, uh, sorry, Greg. Uh, the proof of transit is on um, transit nodes or transit service nodes? Because you mentioned NSH. Yes, um, actually it was for um, uh, service, service uh, function forwarders to support it, not the service functions. And not, not the LSRs, for example. Uh, I mean, because we're talking about. Yes, LSR. It, yes, it was not expect again. Uh, yes, it was for uh, SFC and SH. Um, so, uh, actually, it's a good question because uh, for some reason, um, this uh, work, uh, it was adopted by the working group, but because the SFC working group is in the sunset, um, wh whether this specification will be uh, published, uh, I, I don't know. But it, it, it's quite interesting work. But again, yes, you're right. So it was not functionality expected to be uh, supported by uh, an L LSR. It's for a service uh, function forwarder. Thank you, Greg. Thanks. Okay. So um, in the course of discussion and working on um, this uh, base specification of uh, in situ OEM, uh, several um, additional documents have been adopted, and one of them is um, on IEM direct export. Um, so the, the document uh, was adopted, then it progressed nicely, and uh, I understand it's uh, um, very close to be. Um, sent for publication. So what I am um, direct expert is, uh, it effectively uh, provides um, the identification of um, IEM or optional IEM flow, but uh, most important, it provides a specification of the profile of information to be collected. The processing and transport of this information is um, outside the scope of the document. And um, can be controlled by uh, local policy. Yes, Derek. Um, because we are not getting the uh, metadata uh, with the packet, now we need a packet ID to correlate. Um, that that's a good question. So actually, uh, what it, how this information? What actually? Okay, uh, for um, again, we have uh, three actors uh, in IAM. We have encapsulating node, we have an IAM transit node, and we have IAM decapsulating node. So the uh, responsibility of uh, encapsulating and decapsulating, they are quite clear. Um, for uh, the transit node in uh, direct export. So this node, uh, if it supports uh, direct export, it uh, must be um, able to um, identify uh, user packet as being uh, IEM encapsulated. Because uh, for the security reason, uh, and not all packets in the flow uh, are encapsulated in IAM. But if I'm doing a timestamp, um, exporting a timestamp, how do I know this timestamp is for this packet? Oh, uh, that is outside the scope of this specification. So basically, that's in a uh, local policy how to export how to export the information so mm. um that's it, interesting because i it, uh, for example I, I can speculate for example uh the flow id information can be associated uh 
uh, with this exported information and some um, uh, system identification, no node ID that exports it. And for different data plane, uh, so different, uh, for example, if it's uh, exported over IP, uh, then uh, obviously the source IP address will identify their um, the exporter, the transit node, uh, transit IEM node that exports it. But IEM DEX does not uh, discuss any specific uh, exporting mechanism. Because, yeah, it, it gives an example of uh, using one of the uh, IPFIX uh, raw uh, proposal. Mm. Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Uh, I think I can answer this question. Um, I think uh, uh, Tony is asking how you will correlate the export data with the original user package. Um, so basically, uh, you can see the format there, are flow ID and the sequence number. Um, combining these two uh, information, if they are also exported, you can correlate the the, uh, the exported back with the, with the, this user package. The, the, great. Uh, this is what I, I was, okay, I was hoping this is the case, but it is, says optional. That's number one. And, you know, the flow is uh, for a stream of packets, not just one packet. It's, uh, yeah, for, for optional means, uh, this means that in, uh, in some case you want to save the uh, overhead and uh, you have other mechanics, uh, technologies to, uh, to correlate then you don't need this two field just to save the overhead. For example, if you only sample a single packet to uh, trigger the data export, then you will automatically uh, know how you correlate this, this, this package. So in that case, you don't need these two fields. But otherwise, the flow ID is a, some kind of, a, can be some kind of a random number, it can be, a uniquely use identify a flow, right? Then, then in each flow you have a, a consecutive sequence number uh, to identify each packet in this flow. So okay. combining okay. these two two pieces of data, you can correlate. I, yeah. I understand. That means we do we we cannot fragment the packet. Is that a must? Uh, no, I, I don't think that's uh, possible. So so all the assumption here that you it's uh, still in the uh, you, you don't need a segment uh, packet and uh, so each original packet will uh, correspond to a single triggered exported packet okay thank you yeah uh but actually Tarek, um and hi thank you for the clarification um um this format is what's defined in iem specification so when we discuss it applicability to MPLS, uh, we can, uh, I think, uh, decide whether some of these optional things um, uh, fields are required in MPLS case. Okay, so, um, okay, moving forward. And again, um, so there, um, IEM trace type um, field is, uh, uh, it's a bitmap that identifies the uh, IEM informational elements that to be collected. And, and an extension flex field uh, has two uh, fields defined that uh, identify uh, the presence of flow ID field and sequence number field. So thus, um, um, their length of uh, their IEM DEX uh, header can be um, explicitly calculated. Any questions? Okay, let's move forward. So now uh, look at how IEM DEX can be in um, MPLS network uh, using MPLS network actions. So the, the reason uh, for this proposal is that um, 
IM options are like uh, pre-allocated and incremental uh, add or require their um, space for the operational state and uh, telemetry information in a data packet. And uh, in some environments that uh, may negatively affect the service, for example, uh, deterministic networking. So, um, but at the same time, operational state, uh, the, the ability to, to get a gain visibility into the operational state and um, performance uh, as experienced by um, data packet uh, is uh, useful, but it's not critical. So collecting this information and tr uh, transporting this information can be done out of band relative to the data flow. So for example, um, management plane. So hence uh, the proposal is that uh, we can recommend uh, using IEM DEX in MNA or supporting IEM as IEM DEX option and placing uh, their uh, IEM DEX header in stack data. So that to uh, make this uh, more efficient. And at the same time, uh, the transporting information out of band, so not uh, severely affecting uh, their bandwidth uh, allocated for the user flow. Yes, Hayo. Yeah, I, I didn't see in the document how you are going to encapsulate those, this uh, uh, DEX header ah. in, the, in stack. Yes. Okay. Um, given that we don't have yet a solution, so I, the offers, um, Matt and I, uh, we decided that uh, that can be uh, specified in the further uh, in the future versions. So once uh, the uh, we we hope that there will be a single uh, standardized solution. And that will be reflected in the document uh, on how IEM DEX can be encapsulated uh, in using um, MPLS network action solution. Yes, for, for time being, it's ambiguous. It's open question. Yes, Derek. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if I'm um, the first. I don't want to interrupt. I think Tony and Rakesh are before me. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, then I need somebody to arbitrate because I, I, I will. Have, I, I uh, see. I see. Uh, so I see only four. I think names. Yeah, I know. I know why because I'm a host. I think it gives me uh, yeah. on the top. But uh, but I'll let Tony go ahead. He's on the tip of the queue. Sure. Um, so, uh, Greg, I'm a little confused about your motivation here. Um, as soon as you start recording data in the packet, you are exactly using the bandwidth allocated for the client's flow. This seems backwards. Don't you want to collect telemetry across the control uh, outside of this and across the management plane? Oh, thank you for pointing out because actually that's exactly uh, our goal. And, uh, well, sorry, I confused you. Yes, uh, the intention is not to collect operational state telemetry information in a user packet. The intention is uh, to have only DAX header, which specifies the profile of information and carries uh, required necessary sufficient information for uniquely identifying it uh, when exported, but not the data to be collected in the data uh, in the user packet. Rakesh, you're next. Uh, hi, Greg. Um, so uh, three weeks ago, I think uh, we presented um, IOM um, for the MPLS encapsulation, um, and uh, it had uh, an example um, with uh, the. It's using MNA uh, uh, encoding, 
uh, with uh, the Substack indicator, MA indicator, and um, showing how IOM is carried. It included the DAX trace point as well. Uh, it was uh, encoding was shown using how it would work with JAX uh, uh, draft, for example. Uh, and then we indicated that um, if a, a solution is adopted, uh, the encoding or indicator can be moved around based on what is agreed by the working group. So I'm a bit surprised uh, seeing this um, being presented uh, because it was already uh, presented and uh, discussed. Uh, this is how uh, we would have it uh, as using a mini uh, DAX option as well. Um, well, thank you, Rakesh. Uh, so let me clarify. Um, so I think that there are significant distinctions between uh, two proposals. Uh, one is that uh, this proposal uh, is uh, to uh, recommend that only IEM DEX uh, being uh, applied in MPLS network because others are uh, more risky and uh, impact more severe on the data plane. Uh, second is that this proposal uh, is to have IEM DEX header in ISD. Uh, in stack data block, not in a post stack data block, uh, because correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the proposal that uh, there you presented uh, places IEM in the post stack data. Is that correct? Yeah. So that example showed using uh, the post tech data where all the trace points would be there, but that doesn't preclude putting anything in the in stack data. And this is again based on what working group decide as a solution. We would update the encoding. Um, so that's one point. And second point is that um, I don't think uh, uh, we we can say that only DAX should be used for MPLS and no other trace points should be used for MPLS. Uh, it's just a specifying the encoding or the um, NCAP to say there is an IOAM in this data packet uh, for MPLS, just like you would have IPv6 uh, in extension header or whatnot. And what happens or how IOAM is processed is the job of the IOAM uh, implementation module. Uh, so I don't think we need to in the draft to say that only DAX should be used, and that's the draft that says only DAX should be used. If that's the recommendation, we can put it into the draft that was presented. Uh, um, well, that's, uh, again, um, so uh, I ask you how, um, for example, IEM pre uh uh, incremental option will be supported if uh, it's in an instant data. I think that uh, impact would be quite severe and some somewhat decremental uh, to the uh, network performance. Uh, and uh, I think that we have a difference in opinion on whether uh, MPLS data plane uh, should be clearly stating uh, which IEM option uh, is applicable and, uh, you know, we have, uh, many examples. Uh, 1 of the examples I can, uh. Mention is, for example, uh, BFD, uh, the base, uh, specification of BFD RFC 5080, uh, specifies 2, uh, BFD modes. But only 1 mode is, uh, specified for MPLS. The asynchronous, the demand mode uh, is not specified uh, for uh, MPLS point to point LSP. Okay, so um, I think it's quite reasonable for us to decide the applicability of IEM options to MPLS. It's a completely, I think it's a completely wrong analogy because uh, BFD has different modes and whatnot. It is fine uh, to say that the incremental trace option data is uh, at the post stack uh, to not uh, have adverse effect on the label stack. Uh, this is understood, but uh, I think documents should specify uh, the behavior and characteristics and uh, uh, and whatnot, and not um, 
And it can also say what is the preferred uh, method of doing it. Uh, but uh, uh, I mean, there is a document that's, you know, we've been working on it for four years now, right? So just to uh, uh, say something you know, more to it uh, using a different draft, um, I don't know. Uh, again, um, so uh, I, I think that um, uh, something for their uh, group and uh, interested groups, uh, because uh, one of their um, groups that chattered their uh, open design team is a that net deterministic networking, so that uh, impact of uh, IAM on the that net uh, must be uh, considered very carefully. And uh, that was one of their uh, main motivations for um, concentrating and uh, pointing that um, pre-allocated and incremental uh, trace options uh, will have a severe impact on uh, deterministic networking. Okay, uh, I will go next, uh, Greg. Uh, now, um, my question is: the is the DEX header allowed to change on the path? Uh, no, it's not expected because uh, the DEX header uh, is uh, in, um, applied by the encapsulating IEM node. So, uh, if there. Uh, basically, it creates an edge of IEM domain. If um, there is another, uh, so if if there is another node that acts as encapsulating node of a different IEM domain, then it would. Uh, I will expect that it will insert another IEM DAX header, and then these headers. Uh, should have some uh, distinguishing information. Okay, uh, quickly then the follow-up is, uh, if we can compress the previous header to a packet ID, it's related to the first question I asked. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay, let me, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, I'll... It, to me, <laughs> I mean, I don't know all, <clears throat> if we have an ID and uh, are you thinking of putting all this in, in stack or splitting a half, um, you know, ID in, in stack and okay. I, don't, I don't know what's the proposal. Okay, um, their IPPM specification uh, this defines this header as a uh, up to 16 uh, octets. Okay, so basically it's not to be split. Uh, and the proposal is to put uh, this uh, into the ISD in stack data. Uh, what uh, I think that we can discuss is uh, whether um, okay, so it's more pro likely that uh, export inf uh, information will be over IP network. So hence uh, to look at how the packet in MPLS network can be, what information is needed to, uh, in this uh, header to um, uniquely identify uh, the packet and then being able to correlate uh, collected information that uh, belongs uh, and characterizes um, their same uh, data flow. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jimmy, you're next, and thank you. Uh, Jimmy Dong, if you're there, you're muted or no? You're, you're not. You're not muted. You can go ahead. Oh, you dropped. Uh, Hua Yu, you're next. Yeah, uh, first, uh, uh, I'd like to say um, for this uh, IOM uh, DEX, uh, the header formats already well defined. So I don't see a reasonable uh, scheme actually to put this in a label stack. So 
if you uh, use try to use some other uh, format, you know, whatever it is, it's no longer IOM DEX. Um, second, I want to say that um, I don't think we are at the position to decide uh, which option uh, will be supported and will be, or will be excluded. And I, I think it's totally up to the uh, application or implementer. Um, for us, we only uh, we should only focus on define the ge generic mechanism uh, to support all the possible use cases. And uh, yeah, we can the new use case might emerge, and there are already some existing use cases. But which one uh, will be chosen by the uh, actual uh, implementer? I, I don't think we can decide that because. Uh, Every obviously every use case will have its uh, you know its uh, application scenario and uh, have its pros and cons and uh, uh, I don't think we at the position to this to, to decide that. Okay, thank you, Javier. Okay, Jimmy, you're back. Go ahead. Let me try again. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. So I see this document uh, proposed to use ISD to carry this uh, IOM DAX uh, type uh, data, but uh, it doesn't uh, mention how to encode this IOM DAX format into ISD. Uh, as uh, how you mentioned, if we want to keep this format consistent as the format defined in this uh, working group document in IPPM, it would be challenging to encoded into ISD considering the um, uh, impact of the as as flag as bit right um okay i'm confused um um uh, i'm not sure that um that will be a limiting um factor but uh let's first uh wait for um their solution to come out Yes, yeah, so, I, so I we think want... that, uh, again that that was our intention is as I, as I, as I explained. Yes, this document does not uh, provide their uh, specific of encapsulation um, of the IM dex in uh, ISD because we uh, decided uh, first um, for uh, the discussion of their m a solution uh to um uh settle and we hope that it will uh, settle on one solution that will be uh progressing uh to standardization and then uh this specification will be updated but i understand your concern um i think that again uh, to best my understanding that i am um oh, with that metadata in, encoded in ISD, um, whether it would uh, have to uh, reserve S bit position on MPLS label stack element, uh, my understanding is it's still open question. So uh, if that what will happen, then we'll definitely will have to look at it back and probably change this uh, proposal. But for now, it's since um, we have uh, three different proposals, uh, one of which does not support ISD uh, for metadata, then uh, I think that it's uh, uh, premature to discuss it and say, oh, that cannot be done. Yeah, so if we don't have a, we don't have a uh, encoding format for this uh, IOM tax in the ISD, I think maybe it's still premature to say that we prefer to carry this in the ISD um, to carry it to PSD. I, maybe more analysis would be needed. Well, uh, that's, I probably disagree because um, uh, I think that uh, our uh, idea is a good input for selecting um, m &A solution. So, because uh, if the solution supports ISD and can include IEM DAX in ISD uh, space, 
then uh, the, uh, the uh, resulting solution supporting IEM um, in MPLS using MNA will be more efficient. So uh, I uh, think that I, I think that's a reasonable uh, recommendation or uh, input to the selecting uh, M and A solution. Maybe more reasoning of uh, why ISD is better than PSD for this IOM DAX will be need to be provided. And then regarding the efficiency, I think maybe. Also, uh, if we want to carry this uh, information in the ISD, we also need to specify the position of this data in the label stack, especially if we want to uh, trigger the transient nodes to report the COM the information to the uh, management plane or the controller. Uh, if it is carried uh, uh, multiple times uh, and after each uh, Label or it is uh, carried at the bottom of the label stack. I mean, this also needs to be considered I, as, uh, related to the efficiency. I, I I agree. It's it's a good suggestions and uh, we'll work on them uh, in uh, future versions. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Jimmy, uh, I think you're done. Uh, Tony, oh, Rakesh, you're next. Rakesh. Yeah, so uh, I agree with uh, uh, Jimmy uh, without uh, proper um, encoding and solution of how it would work. Uh, uh, I think it's quite premature um, just to say oh, we put something in the stack and something in post stack and use some solution that will be for m a and say this is iom that's not uh, that's way too um uh, superficial so um i think what we try to do is use the existing uh, solid proposals with a high drop for extension header and jack drop and showed exactly how the whole encoding will work and uh, as an example with an idea that uh, it can be updated based on working group, um, how it progresses. Thanks. Okay, uh, Tony, uh, go ahead. Uh, to answer for Jimmy, the motivation for keeping this as in stack data is pretty straightforward. Uh, putting this in post stack data would have a significant performance hit and in stack data on legacy implementations is much faster to access. Thank you, Tony. you? Go ahead. Uh, I, I don't agree. There's a, a performance difference. So the main performance impact uh, here is uh, caused by actually processing the header, uh, uh, collecting the data and exports data. But as for the accessor data, it's just a, a couple of cycles. It's, a, it's just a couple of a parser. If you consider the uh, the uh, overall depth of the label stack, it's just a, add a, a few more clock cycles to reach the post stack data. So I don't think there's a, any performance impacts there. So we've disagreed about this before, and I don't think we're going to ever agree on this. Um, there are legacy implementations which do not read the entire packet into on-chip data. There are legacy implementations that only suck up a certain number of bytes at the start of the data. If you put post-stack data that's farther out, the chip literally cannot read it. So you have, yeah, that's a capability issue for please. the legacy device. Let me finish, please. Yep. You have to suck the entire packet up into the CPU, what we call the punt path to access it. If PSD is going to end up in the punt path, that performance is going to be an order of magnitude slower than what could be achieved with in stack data. Okay, now I realize you don't accept that, but the rest of the world knows about this. I agree with yeah, you. So that's, that's the way they work. But I, I don't think uh, we will support this MNAC, those devices as well, because 
simply because their capability is so low that it's just impossible for them to to do any anything more complex. So why we want those devices to support this new MLA? Good. So that's a again that's a cap capability. Can issue. we, can we stick there to the order, please? Yeah. Uh, order of the queue. Uh, I, I do have. Are you are you done? Are you? Uh, in terms of, I think it's a good discussion that you're having, but uh, I I do want to go to the queue. So Jimmy, you're next. Yeah, Andre. As I mentioned uh, uh, to uh, Greg, uh, if you want to. Uh, trigger the, all the trusting nodes to report the IOM data using the IOM DAX type. Uh, then it, you may either carry this uh, IOM DAX at the bottom of the label stack, or you carry this uh, each time after every label, uh, which will cause like the encapsulation overhead, and uh, which we want to avoid with this IOM DAX uh, from uh, stale IOM uh, mechanism. So. Uh, then maybe the more efficient way is to carry it as a bottom of the stack, but that would be no much difference from the using PSD. Um, it's it's a good observation, Jim, and uh, I agree with you that uh, that analysis uh, is something that we need to get to. Uh, I can just point to the uh, very, um, I think, that relevant to this, uh, discussion we had with the entropy label indicator and how the entropy label indicator or entropy label uh, should be placed in a label stack. Um, so that's why we have a special extensions in IGPs and uh, I think the BGPLS that advertises uh, their maximum label stack uh, that the uh, system can uh, look at uh, efficiently. So, um, I think that uh, the question that you are raising uh, is very relevant, but I see it as applicable to any uh, m a action. So, uh, yes, DEX might be uh, adding uh, more uh, octets, but uh, in, uh, how often to place M and A um, in the stack, especially um, sub stack uh, network action sub stack with the ISD, uh, if there is any metadata, uh, that's a uh, general question for their uh, M and A. Yeah, I agree. This is a general question to the all the M and A. Uh, application uh, ISD applications that uh, need to consider the efficiency of the encoding and uh, yeah, but why it, don't we want to it, it's, afford that? Yeah, yeah, it's I think that it equally applies to um, actions that don't have metadata, but use uh, uh, network action substack, um, so basically the indicators, or uh, use indicators to point to the post tech data. So, um, but yeah, I agree. It's something that needs to be considered and discussed. And uh, um, well, there was no free lunch, so there will be some impact. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Next is Tony. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to reply to how you, um, we have no choice about how we deploy MNA. We have to deploy it on legacy nodes. If you want to define new silicon and wait for that new silicon to be deployed throughout the internet backbone, you'll be waiting 30 years. Uh, I'm not prepared to wait that long. If you are, you're younger than I. Okay, uh, thank you. Stuart, you're next. In addition to which, such silicon would be considerably more expensive and less dense than you can achieve otherwise. And it's not clear that the commercial value of the function would be sufficient to pay for the incremental cost. Are you? You're back? Go ahead. Let's not forget the amateur law that uh, for any, uh, to support any new function, you might need, say, a few hundred clock cycles. 
but to uh, save the time uh, to reach the PSD might, might just 10 cycles. Let's say you have a, if you do only in ISD, you just save 10 cycles out of hundreds of cycles. But if you do that in PSD, you just add 10 more cycles. So that's nothing. So I don't think that's a, a performance issue here. So if you say you, you, you want to use a legacy DY to support new MNA actions, you need to consider if you can afford to uh, actually uh, support that action because that will to do the action itself, it costs a lot more cycles. Okay, uh, thank you, Hoi Yu. Back, Tony, you're next. So this is not a matter of 10 more cycles. This is a matter of thousands more cycles. Again, in some legacy hardware, you have a limited amount of, of the packet in the silicon. Maybe only the first 128 bytes, maybe only the first 256. If you want to reach past that, then you have to send the pa entire packet up to the CPU. We're talking about milliseconds of delay here. Do you really want to do that? Um, this is not credible if you're trying to deliver a high performance service. And that's what we're trying to get out of IOM DEX. So basically, I don't think the functions like IOM should be supported by those low performance devices. Um, the second, I, I think you, we need to actually give a survey what kind of device you are mentioning, what their capability is. Because we, we have to have a minimum accept, acceptable device uh, we, we intend to support, right? We, we cannot just make the assumption that, you know, they can only read the top label, for example. So in that case, no, no solution can um, solve it. But we, we have to have some assumption, basic assumption, we, every uh, minimum requirement for the devices. And second, we, whatever uh, scheme we design, we should support the incremental deployment strategy, which means we can selectively uh, allow some of the device can support those and some, if they cannot, the minimum requirement is that they can just normally forward the packet. So if uh, we support this incremental deployment strategy, then it will be fine. Okay, well, you, thank you. Uh, Stuart, you're next. So I'm pretty, I think Tony and I are pretty much on the same page with this, right? It's not about low performance hardware. Um, high performance hardware builds, uh, runs on a cache that um, in hardware makes a portion of the packet available. To go and get any other part of the packet, if you run out of that cache, is a DMA operation to go and get it out of much, much slower um, memory. Um, and that takes you know, a lot of uh, cycles and slows the thing down. And if you put in extra memory to deal with this by caching larger amounts, you are adding some of the most um, you know, inefficient silicon you can add to the, to the chip because every packet that you're going to process needs all this extra very hard, uh, fast four transistor or cell um, memory for it. So, you know, I, I think you need to think about how the very fast routers work um, as, as, you know, it, it's, you know it's, it's not just um, uh, le legacy slow ones we're talking about. Thank you. Okay, uh, Tony, go ahead. So we've actually been spent a lot of time worrying about where the bottom of stack is. We already advertise how many uh, labels each router can support. Um, we did all of this back for the entropy label. We know exactly uh, how far down we can go. Um, that's all well advertised already. So anyone injecting uh, MNA into the label stack knows exactly where it can go without incurring performance hit. 
And all we have to do is put this in stack so that we don't have those performance problems. Okay, well, you go ahead. Yeah, I, 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 even you put something in, uh, in stack, it doesn't mean it's uh, closer to the uh, top of stack, right? It, is, it totally depends how many actions you support, what the size of it, and where you put it in the packet. So it, it also means you, even you put it post stack, it doesn't mean it's, it's farther uh, from the top stack. It also depends on the depth of your label stack. So I, I, I think there's a, ISC and PSC only concern about is actually is, uh, um, encoding, different encoding style, but it doesn't have a, a determine actually how far is from top stack. So that's why the second, I want to respond to um, uh, Stuart. I, I do understand how the um, modern uh, hardware, uh, high performance hardware works, but as far as I understand, they all have a, a big, very deep, um, Parser window. So, uh, as long as the header is parsed, it's already there, and then you, you're just free to process them. So, again, the performance limiter here is how difficult, how, how many cycles you will process the header itself. Some actions need very simple you know, processing. It's just a, you know, very quickly they can update the package and finish the decision. But some of them, they do need a lot of work. So, it's depend. The performance limit here is action itself, but not the parsing. The parsing is very fast. It, it, as long as the, you you can the hardware can reach that that byte, it's just a in terms of a, a few cycles. It's nothing in the in the system. Okay. Um, for you, thanks, uh, Tony. You're next. Uh, hi, you. You're exactly wrong. Um, if you put something in PSD, it is going to be farther down the label stack. Transit nodes in an SR network have many, many SIDs between the top of stack and PSD. And when we can stick something in the stack, that means that there are going to be multiple labels sitting between uh, uh, MNA and the post stack data. So you've got some definite differences that are visible here. Um, and, and I think you need to understand that. And I also want you to think about um, high-end hardware that has been built over the years. Stop thinking about Jericho 2 because that's not legacy hardware. Okay? You've got legacy hardware that sucks up again, like the first 256 bytes of the packet, and that's it. Nothing more. If you've got 128 bytes only in the chip, then PSD may be out of reach. And um, you don't necessarily have any way of getting to it. So you may have to punt just because you can't reach the data. Stuart, go ahead. I was muted. Um, I think we missed a question in our survey, didn't we? we should have asked what the uh, maximum depth into the packet that could be reached was. I suppose we could deduce it by looking at some, um, at some uh, maximum stack depth stuff um, that's advertised around the network. But nonetheless, I think we missed a trick here. We should have found out what this is and then that would have stopped this argument. It would have either been um, infinity or zero and we'd have known how to design the system. Thank you. Tony, go ahead. There are numbers that we see floating around the, the network that are 8, 9, 15. So label stack depths are pretty constrained. That's sort of what I was expecting. I was being somewhat rhetorical, but I do think we missed the trick of of asking the question, unfortunately, because that would have killed this argument one way or the other. Okay. Um, oh, why you? You're not giving up. Yeah. No. I. 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 I mean, we we do need to give a, uh, some of the minimum. Uh, 
assumption the for the uh, stack depths. That's that's I think that's a, a necessary. We, we you have to all agree on that and uh, design based on that. So that's that's one thing. Second thing uh, is uh, um, I think uh, we we also need to decide if we mandatory uh, uh, if if every legacy device um, in the system must must support all the actions or we can allow them to skip that. So that's a that's another critical question. I, I think we need to have a both um, answered. Then, then we can we can start to have we have meaningful designs. Um, so so to me, I, I think uh, you know it's just a try the you know, best luck. You know, for for example, you can uh, luckily with some Lex like, device to support some of the uh, actions. That's, that's not good enough. We we have to you know uh, solve the problem by by tell okay we the solution can uh, you know this device can support this is okay we have if we have a, a more advanced device in the system can be deployed uh, with the new new functions and start to you know to use it and. That, that's good enough. Uh, I think uh, for many of the applications, I, I I think they are very useful, but I don't expect the legacy like, device actually can actually support that. Okay, um, I have my hand raised, and <clears throat> I want to say that um, I think what what I heard from Stewart and Tony is is if there is a legacy device that cannot go beyond then we have an alternative but if there is a device that is that super device that can you know go really deep uh, in the packet then the mna solution will allow you to put put you know action data or metadata in uh, outside outside the stack so it all depends on your the operator's network devices capability and uh you know, I, I don't think we have to put a requirement like you're saying, why you that uh, you know, uh, the solution or M and A cannot work with uh, devices that are, you know, eight uh, labels um, readable depth. Yeah, I don't think that is a requirement. Thanks. Um, and if I go to the queue now, uh, I have Tony. Uh, how you, you've got the perfect use case on the screen right in front of you. Here we want to do a tracer app. We'd like to get some information back. And if only 10% of the nodes in the network support the tracer app, what information do you actually get? You get to know where every 10th hop is? How useful is that? For MNA to be useful, we need it to be supported on as many nodes as possible. And that means we want as broad a support as we can get. And that means we need to support as many legacy nodes as we possibly can. Okay. Well, you did you leave your hand up or you want to? to yeah, I, I, it's, it's, of course, it's, a, it's better to have as many nodes to support this. But as long as we can allow there's only even only one node don't need to support this. That's an incremental deployment, right? We, we, we should support that because for many applications, I can see only if just a few uh, nodes on the network, in the network can support that. It's, it's, it's already very useful. So we, we can start to build uh, uh, around that and eventually make more and more nodes to support that. So I think that's a good strategy. Okay, it's quieter now and don't have hands in the queue. Okay, I, I, actually, I, I was not expecting that uh, this uh, will bring 
so much discussion. Uh, but yeah, I, I appreciate that uh, all the feedback and uh, opinions that uh, expressed and thank you. And um, as I mentioned, so this is just the beginning of the work and uh, as uh, uh, explained, uh, our intention is to uh, give information for consideration in selecting m a solution and uh, once uh, hopefully there will be an agreement to standardize one solution then uh, that would be uh, uh, used uh, in uh, updating this uh, document and I probably will stop sharing okay thank you Greg um... We go back to the agenda. I think what uh, the last item we had is uh, to talk about the ordering uh, issue of actions and uh, Tony promised to talk about that. At least he's on the agenda. So on to you, Tony. Thank you. One moment while I pull up slides. I see it. Okay. Uh, so this is the text that is currently in the draft. Uh, this was distributed and discussed already. And apparently there's some objection. And I didn't hear what it was. So if folks have questions about the text, let's discuss it now, please. Um, let me raise my hand. I think last time, Tony, you asked very good, legitimate questions, and uh, I don't know if you got all the answers for, like, um, the, the design assumptions and uh, in that we're following so that we can com come to conclusions. But now you, you seem to have decided to put a must uh, with all caps. So. Is it based on some feedback you got from last time? I just want to get that impression. Um, it was must because that was the text we agreed to. Um, I'm not sure which must we're talking about here. Uh, the first must, capital must, pretty straightforward. Uh, we are asking for a deterministic order, and that should not be surprising. Is there any objection to that? And then the second must was from the discussion we had about having private network actions. And these, the consensus was that they must be included. Okay. Um... Um, yeah, um, I, I, I don't remember we, uh, uh, we set out that the, the order must be set. A, a deterministic order must be set, but um, maybe I'm wrong. So I'll go to the queue and, say, and see what Huayu has to say about this. Yeah, I just want you to clarify uh, what's a... Uh, uh, m a solution, uh, what you mean here for the term of m a solution? In my understanding, there can there could be two interpretations. One is that how we design this generic mechanism or container to hold the m a, whatever it is. So that's a that's a kind of solution. Uh, another solution uh, is. Uh, Maybe uh, related to directly related to the use case themselves. So, what actions will be supported? So, in in, in my opinion, this kind of order uh, issue should be considered by the use cases itself. It's a um, but it's a not a requirement for the I'm in a um, you know encapsulation solution. So, if uh, so I, I'm I'm not sure uh, what you actually mean here. So that's why I I have I have no opinion if this must should be here or not. 
So we've used the words MA solution quite consistently over the years. And we very much are pointing to the documents that fulfill the MA architecture. That includes the use cases, the requirements, and the framework. That's what we mean by an MA solution. So you mean the including the um, use cases or you know, just so a, when if we you write a document mm -hmm. that when you write a document, a proposal that ha has tells us what the encoding should be and how to interpret that encoding, that is considered an MA solution. So I I'm so I'm yeah, I'm I'm still confused. It seems uh, you are mentioning too wide a scope or you just say, okay, wh what's a way actually to encode the MA, no matter what uh, what MA is? No, what we're saying is when you write the, your document, when you write a proposal, okay, that tells us how to encode MA and how how what it means and how to deal with it, you have to tell us what order to do things in. That's all this is saying. No, that's what I mean. Is it depends on the ac uh, action use case itself. But without any use case, I just the solution I gets to tell us that. But you have to tell us what to do. Solution can only tell you you, you that's de determined by the action itself. Correct. You have to tell us uh, the ordering of actions. You cannot have an act two actions in the same solution that you, both say you, they you have cannot to go give an order. Not help. That's my my point. Without without the without the use cases, you can give an order. You don't know what's ABC will support. Then how can you tell what their order should be? If you can't tell us the order, I can't tell you what the packet will do. Can that, that, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, you can, let's let's give a chance to lower to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I lower you next. No, I yes, uh, it's actually for Tarek. Uh, I actually, I actually remember the, the the outcome of the discussion pretty much as is captured in the text on the screen. Uh, so I don't really get what you were saying about that we included must that was not in the discussion uh i can comment if you allow me on this so last time we talked about actions that are sensitive to ordering and i think you gave a an example about uh resetting and an action to reset a counter and but there were actions that are not sensitive to ordering so and we had this, this discussion. So, if if there is uh, actions that are sensitive to ordering, then we must specify a deterministic order. If the set of actions in the packet are not sensitive to ordering, then I, you know, maybe we don't need to specify an order. So it all depends on the set of actions sitting in that packet. That's what I'm. Um, this is why I uh, was skeptical. I'm just elaborating on my comment. Thank you. Okay, I understand you. Okay, Jimmy, you're next. Yeah, uh, actually, I think I mentioned this uh, in previous meetings that uh, the order actually depends on what is the action, is how the action is defined in the like the use case or the specification of the action. And before we know what the action is about, we really cannot give the all specify the order for processing the actions in the like generic enca encapsulation solution document. If so I, if I that, may comment, Jimmy, because you're you're following up. I don't think we need to, you know, you know, every use case out there, you know, to define it before. We just need to allow, uh, if there is an action that's sensitive to ordering, um, we can solve it. If not, we can solve it. That's it. Yeah, maybe we can say 
we need to consider this for some action which required some specific ordering in the processing that uh, may not be a must and we cannot give the uh, precise uh, ordering before we have the actions defined yeah that's my uh, understanding okay thank you john drake you're next yeah um you and I had this discussion last time, Tarek. If there are actions that are not sensitive to ordering, then you can specify an order for them and nothing breaks. Um, also, we have used consistently MA solution and network action uh, definition. So it, it shouldn't be a surprise right now what we mean by MA solution and network action solution. We also said that. When you write an RFC, which defines a network action, you have to specify its interaction with all other network actions. Thank you. Um, I'm next, uh, so I'm going to respond to that. And, and yes, true, if you specify an order, it won't break things because it's not sensitive to order in that case that you're mentioning. The only concern would be the overhead. Uh, if you know, there's an overhead to specifying an order. Um, you know, I don't, we don't, we don't talk about how here. We're just saying it must. Um, do we want to leave room, you know, maybe make it optional? So that the discussion I'm having is not about not uh, dictating order, but is it really a, uh, a blanket statement? That's it. And Jagan, you're next. I have a basic clarification here. Like uh, the ordering is just the uh, information when we implement the NAI, or it should be part of the um, encoding itself. Uh, probably anybody can answer this. How you want to do it? We leave up to you. It can it can be based on something in the encoding. It can be an absolute mandate. Okay. You could do things in numeric order. You could do things in reverse numeric order. You could do things in, in alphabetical order by the title of the RFC, if you really care. So, okay. As so long this, as it's deterministic, we don't care. Okay. So, so this is specific to a solution which we are providing, right? Correct. Okay. For example, in your draft, you might want to say that you process things at one opcode at a time as they appear in ISD. Okay. Um, is it not um, specific to a device because they have a different internal architecture? Well, that's a problem because if devices, two devices process the same packet in different orders, we might get different results. I don't think uh we want that. When you say ordering, right? So I think uh, uh, it should be like a specific to a um, what uh, problem you are solving. Like uh, it's specific to NAI, I would say. So the NAI should say like uh, how this should be ordered, and then that should be implemented uh, with respect to the each and every ASIC. Uh, it should not be encoded as part of the uh, um, packet itself. The ordering. If you want to, well, hang on. You just asked for two different things. If the NIIs mandate ordering, that's one direction. If the encoding mandates the ordering, that's another alternative. I'm I far prefer the latter because I would rather do just things sequentially. Okay, because uh, in my opinion, right, this ordering should be uh, um, in the NAI specific draft, uh, saying that this is what order I need to prefer. It is up to the you know like um, how the uh, device can. Process it. I, I really don't like it being in the NAI specific draft because I don't want an action coming along and saying I have to go first. I would much rather the architecture say or the solution say, okay, we're going to do things in sequential order as they appear in the packet. Okay, because um, I agree with uh, no like Tarek's um, statement, like uh, that's going to complicate the. Uh, uh, processing and uh, the encoding formats. 
Thank you. It doesn't have to complicate the encoding formats. Again, in your own format, you've already got opcodes aligned in a particular order. If you evaluate them in any other order, that's going to be more complicated. And so an NEI that comes along and says it must be first, but happens to occur at the end of ISD, that's going to be a really annoying to implement. The way you're next. Actually, I had a couple of things, but the, the previous discussion actually covered that. I just question for Tarek again. Uh, there are two must on in the text. You are discussing the first. Is that my correctly? Yes, that's true. I'm. I'm not saying that it should not be dictated for order for actions that are sensitive to ordering. So, um, maybe a reword uh, of the st statement. I can send text, but I'm not against this. Let me be clear. Uh, I think going back to what John Drake was saying, he's saying that uh, specifying order always does not harm until we define the solution. I haven't um, evaluated the overhead. Um, so I, it's solution dependent how you define the order. If it is no biggie, no overhead, I am okay with that. Um, so for the framework authors, I. Uh, Encourage you, you know, to see if must should be there or a should uh, with all caps. I don't know. Uh, well, should specify is that the feminist order is quite old, isn't it? It leaves room for uh, actions that are not sensitive so that we don't define an order. I don't know how we'll define the order. Is it like a yeah, I, I've, I've heard multiple variants. One is an opcode uh, appearance in the packet. The other is a flag uh, bit uh, position. And maybe the third is an ordered list of actions. I don't know. Okay, uh, thanks. Thank you. Okay, who are you? You're next. Yeah, I, I agree with Tarek. Uh, the six is must. It's a too strong a word, and also uh, we need at least add uh, some if condition that uh, if there is a, a explicit uh, dependency between the actions, uh, because uh, we do see many other cases. The order really doesn't matter. There's no order, no inherent order between them. And also uh, by examining uh, by examining the existing use cases. As we have done last time, we haven't seen any, so we shouldn't just based on some uh, imaginary cases and to give uh, such a strong requirement to just uh, uh, in the risk of over engineering. That is incorrect. We have existing use cases where we know things are going to matter. We have an entropy label and we have IOAM. And if we're looking at exit uh, identifiers, then IOAM is going to give you different results depending on whether it's executed before or after we consider the entropy level. No, I don't think that's a uh, valid case because uh, for IOAM, that's a, uh, the semantics is clear that if you want to record the exit uh, interface, that means the actual exiting uh, interface. It doesn't make, doesn't doesn't mean okay some intermediate result. So in that case, so there's no uh, any ambiguity there. So you should uh, uh, fill that data field until uh, you get the final uh, export interface. So that's, I don't think that's, that's what a, we want. Uh, but you haven't said exactly that in any document. And no, that's sad. That, that, that's the best fight in the IOM uh, standard, right? They tell you what the meaning of this data field is, that you should comply, that no, any implement, implementation should comply with that. It's regardless what other uh, forward indication you can make in the system. 
finally, you need to fill this field with uh, real real data. There is no way that MNA or that IOAM can specify that it needs to be evaluated last because it doesn't refer to MNA. You have to explain no, how that's MNA a, that's operates a, within the MNA document. That's exactly what it's I mean. Happen. That uh, you have this use case, you support this use case. You need to comply with what's specified for that use case. If you want to support uh, IOAM, then you need to do that based on the uh, specification of it. You need to get all the data correctly. That's the basic requirement of the use case. But regardless, what's uh, uh, in which environment you will use, it's not unique to MPOS, it's also be used in IPv6, in any other types of networks, all like this. You have to define the semantics in the architecture. If the semantics aren't clear, anyone can do anything and we will get garbage. Yeah, no, nowhere else is actually defined this kind of, it's just a, in, in, by default, they will comply with this uh, specification. There's no problem. So I don't think this is unique to MPOS, right? It's uh, already be used by any other, many other type of networks. The, in those networks, there are also all those kind of other applications like the entropy, whatever it is. There's no, no issue raised because the people all know we just need to comply with the standard, then we are okay. The, the order I'm issue sorry, should be resolved have... by the implementation. I'm sorry, but you don't have the luxury of doing that. We have underspecified things before and we get various different results. The original trace route has no specification. It was just basically code that Van Jacobson shipped and some people implemented exit and some people um, implemented entrance. And so we got various things. We got several people, um, when we look at forwarding and decrementing hop count, people implement, uh, in, implemented decrementing hop count at various points along the forwarding path. And so when you get an ICMP error reply, you don't know exactly what hop count you got back. Either you got it before or after they decremented it and before or after they realized there was an error. So you, if you don't specify the semantics, you're gonna get garbage. All I see is that semantics do need to be specified, but this is specified in the use case itself. It's not determined by the encoding in the in the packet. Nobody does that because that's that's, a, that's unnecessary, and in many time in many cases it's impossible. Because, for for example, for the IOM, I have explained that the data are collected throughout the pipeline from ingress to egress. So it's collected everywhere. It means maybe the, the life cycle of this, uh, this appli uh, application or this use case is, is just from the packet time the packet enter the device and, and the time it leave the device. So there's no order because it's everywhere. The data collected are collected everywhere. So how to guarantee uh, the, the data is collected correctly? That's a, you need to comply with the real meaning of the specification of each data type. If you stick to that, you are fine. I so that's the that's implementer. You, 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 can, you, you cannot just I mean, add you're, some you're orders. That we in, not specify in, things. In, in this Don't case. interrupt me. If I'm being nice enough not to interrupt you, how about you not interrupt me? You, this, this, this time you interrupt me. Okay, think, sorry. Uh, this time you interrupt I'm me. I'm sorry, I'm just done with this. Uh, uh, Why you and, uh, and, and Tony? I think I think we have to you know um, we have to conclude this first of all because we don't have time and and um, mm, let, let me uh, before we I'll I'll give each a chance to speak last statement um, I don't remember whose turn was it so I'll just flip a coin and say um, uh, why you say a, a last statement before I um, give a chance to Tony to respond back. Yeah, I, have, to, I, to I, I have no more comments, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Tony, do you want to say the concluding uh, statement? Sure, let me try again. 
we do not specify things per use case. We do not want to write specifications for each use case in the world. Each combination of actions within MA counts as a use case, and that's the power set of all documents. No, thank you. We might specify things per action, but specifying specs per action is kind of painful because each action can't see what all the other actions are, especially if there are private actions or future actions to be defined. So it's kind of hard to, to say how you're going to interact with something that hasn't been written down yet. This is why we would like the architecture solution to say, this is how you should do things. Now, I agree that it's a semantic model and not necessarily a mandate on how the implementation does it. The implementation's obligation is to create the same semantics. If you want to write language like that, I'm happy to do that, but that's another level of sophistication that we don't seem to be willing to accept. All right. For now, if this language stands, if somebody wants to propose better language, please send it to us. Thank you, Tony, for sharing that. That was a very good uh, discussion. Um, before I close, let me ask Loa and uh, Stewart, any closing comments from you for today? No, uh, no I'm okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, we will uh, see you next week if there is an agenda. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye bye.